and was really interested in the way that the story villainizes and demonizes and literally makes uh, monstrous um, uh, a woman who doesn't have maternal instincts, um, who uh, doesn't necessarily feel, um, you know, the desire to be motherly um, or to be a mother. Um, and I was really fascinated by that and really wanted to um, think about this character. I said, you know, there's this one author who, and she talks about tiger spirit. <laughs> like, what do you mean? I said, she comes and he's a little taller. Than me. Yeah. <laughs> I feared him. He was just a lot more engaged after that. But yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, for sure. I mean, I was just always obsessively like, tell me the story again, um, this fascination and also horror. Um, but uh, I, I was really interested because years later when I researched the story, first of all, I thought the Peanuts Toes thing was just something my mom made up because she likes Peanuts, but apparently <laughs> it's like a real canonical part of the story. And I was actually kind of charmed by her. She's the villain of the story and she dies at the end. But I, I had this kind of new understanding where I did feel this intense empathy. <laughs> um, and I remember reading um, the reading the, reading out the story online, it was saying things like, oh, this tiger spirit, in order to assume a human uh, woman's form, she has to consume children. That's the cost of being in a woman's body. Um, and so if she wants to continue to be a woman, she has to eat, eat children. Um, and I was really fascinated by this. Um, and was really interested in the way that the story villainizes and demonizes and literally makes uh, monstrous um, uh, a woman who doesn't have maternal instincts, um, who uh, doesn't necessarily feel, um, you know, the desire to be motherly um, or to be a mother. Um, and I was really fascinated by that and really wanted to um, think about this character um, and write about specifically in the novel, both the grandmother and the mother, when it enters their perspectives, they're both around 14 or in their teenage years. And it was really important for me um, to kind of allow them all, all the women in the family to be adolescents and to be selfish and to be um, deeply flawed rather than this idea of a very self-sacrificial mother and the idea that we only revere mothers when they are self-sacrificing, you know, that a good mother is, oh, someone who gave up everything for me um, or who sacrificed to raise me. Um, and I just wanted to push back a little bit against that narrative of self-sacrifice as translating into goodness. If you've enjoyed the conversation that you just heard, do subscribe to our channel for much more.